So welcome everybody. Um, this is Brian Collins and Ellen Bard here. So Brian, do you want to introduce yourself first? Uh, hi, Ellen. So yes, it's uh, great to talk to you. So um, I'm, my name is Brian, obviously Brian Collins, and um, I'm uh, based in uh, Dublin. And I am a writer with a, with a website called Become a Writer Today. And uh, what I do is I give practical advice to new writers and I talk about topics like productivity and creativity. And I suppose I've been on your list for, for a while, Ellen. So, so I've been enjoying some of the the, the great content you've been sharing about uh, self-care. So it's, it's great to talk to you today. Yeah, fantastic. Um, and we have a lot of crossover because I'm also on your list because as well as being a work psychologist, um, which is um, my profession, um, I'm also a, an author. So I write a blog, um, which is around personal development, but I also write paranormal romance, um, which is uh, a little bit off to the side, but um, it's something that I really enjoy. So uh, I think we have a lot in common in terms of... Um, both being into, interested in personal development, but also very focused on creativity and productivity, but trying not to kill yourself while doing it, which uh, is not always an easy thing. Yeah, 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 I would agree. So what, what, what I try and do is I, uh, you know, pick one area that I want to, to focus on for like a three month period. So that could be, you know, writing a, a fiction book, which I did last year. So I just focused on writing that and nothing else for three months. Or at the moment, what I picked is I'm working on a book about creativity. So I, so I kind of dedicate my free time for writing, for just working in that book. I never have any extra financial resources. I just use it for things to do with that book. So, so that kind of helps me focus on um, uh, what matters. Because I, I think one of the things that, <clears throat> that I learned about self-care, maybe from you and from other uh, writers, is, is that uh, if you do too, too many things at once, it you know, can become overwhelming. Mm. Um, you, know, you, you can risk becoming overloaded by information. Or you can think that you need to buy uh, all these, you know, fancy tools and services. Where the reality is, you, you, you know, you only need something that's going to help your most important project or whatever it is that you're working or writing today. Mm, mm, yeah, I think that's such such a good point. There are so many productivity apps and tools and books. Um, and if you're focused on on being productive, then you're going to suck that kind of stuff up. But too much, and yeah, you definitely go into overwhelm. Um, so I was thinking maybe for, um, for viewers, we could talk a little bit about what self-care actually is, because I know that for a lot of people, um, they might have heard the term or heard the concept, but not know so much. So what, what does it mean to you? Uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's a really good question, actually. Uh, in another life, uh, before I was a, a, a writer, um, I actually used to work in a, in a setting um, where I'd support people with intellectual disabilities to, to live lives in the community. And a part of that, you know, involved caring for people with intellectual disabilities. But I suppose the, the reason why I bring it up is <clears throat> um, it's quite a demanding and difficult job. Mm -hmm. And the, the carers that I worked with used, used to kind of joke, you know, who cares for the carers? Mm -hmm. And what, what I think what, what they meant by that is that when you're working in a stressful situation, you know, you have to take time out for yourself to, to recharge or to replenish. Um, before you can go back into the, the situation and you know g give it a hundred percent, so so for me, uh, self care means uh, maybe two or three different things. Um, it firstly means taking time out to to exercise. Mm. Um, secondly, taking time out to to maybe spend time with friends or family, uh, and then thirdly, taking some time out to do things like um, meditating or reading. Um, and I find if, if I kind of build them into my day or my week, then I then the chances of me being coming burnt out are a lot less. Mm. Mm. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I think that's a good description. And um, it is often people who uh, give a lot to other people. Um, so caring professions, doctors, um, social workers. I have a, a surprising number of social workers who are in uh, on my list who uh, read the website um, who often get burnt out around self-care. Um, I, I would define it um, as taking care of yourself uh, physically, emotionally and mentally, um, which really um, all the things that you were um, suggesting there come under. Um, and I think in my experience, people tend to focus on, they tend to have a natural preference for one rather than the other. So maybe someone's really great with um, their physical needs, but maybe emotional needs they're not so good at or vice versa. Have you come across that at all? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that can be a challenge. I mean, like anyone, I would be <clears throat> maybe guilty of 
focusing on on one thing and then maybe forgetting about some some other important things that that I have to do. Um, so what I find is helpful is is, is to keep a journal. Um, I suppose I, I'm biased being a writer. <laughs> I, I will keep a journal, but but I, even if even if you don't enjoy writing, you know it's still useful to have somewhere where you can go and reflect on what you've done uh, each week. Um, and then maybe at the end of the month, if you read back over your previous entries or or drawings or whatever it is you're using to to reflect on what you do, uh, there's kind of two two key benefits. The first is that you you know you can see everything that you've done over the past while and ask yourself was that time well spent. Mm. And secondly, you can identify negative thought patterns and negative behaviors. So maybe you you know I suppose maybe one thing that I was guilty of last year was I'd stay up till two in the morning looking at uh, things on the internet. Um, <laughs> that you know reading entertainment websites and so on and then I'd be tired the next day and I'd wonder why so uh, when I was reading journal entries about being tired I realized that I needed to, to you know change my uh, time and go to bed and start mm-hmm. rising earlier and, and use that time to to write and then when I did mm-hmm. that I found I was um, maybe more happier about how we're spending the, the free hours that I have. Mm-hmm. I think that's a, a great point again like uh, I find uh, often we don't realise where our time goes or how we're even spending our time. And I think uh, journaling is a, um, a great way around that. And I also, I do uh, morning pages, so a slightly different form of journaling, but same kind of thing. Um, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a great practice, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and I found, um, so when I first started doing it for maybe the first few months, it was all very um, like intellectual and analytical, which is kind of how my brain is. And I realized when I read the first couple of months worth back that there was nothing about emotions at all. And so for me, I actually asked myself, how do I feel right now um, in my journaling? Um, And then that's my way of kind of uh, not skipping that part, um, which is easy for me to, uh, to skip over. And now I've been doing them for about three, three and a half years. So um, uh, I've got a lot out of it. Um, I think the topic of creativity and productivity and self-care is a really interesting one because I feel like there are a lot of myths around the area. So there's this kind of picture of the tortured artist staying up until four o'clock in the morning, writing all night, um, drawing all night, painting all night. Um, And sometimes it feels like with creativity particularly, you know, you have to really burn yourself out in order to be... Uh, a true artist what's your take on that uh yeah yeah there's definitely a, a kind of a pernicious myth that a lot of uh, artists are you know tortured souls and that they have you know uh, drinking problems and substance yeah. abuse problems uh and and you know really negative behaviors yeah and, and while that's certainly true uh, i think those stories tend to get more uh, traction than this, the stories of hardworking artists who mm. actually spend their time um, working on their, their creative projects. Mm. Um, and there was even an interesting story about Ernest Hemingway. He was a, you know, famous for, for, for being a notorious drinker. And, and while he certainly was, um, his granddaughter recently said that uh, Ernest Hemingway actually never wrote while he, he was drunk. He always wrote early in the morning before he touched a drop of alcohol. Uh, and I, I think there's another, Scott F. Fitzgerald is another example. Um, I mean, he was also famous for going out and partying a lot, but towards the end of his career, he tried to, to sober up and he said that, um, you know, alcohol had wrecked his uh, creativity. Um, so, you know, while you, you might get some entertaining stories for your for your work. You know, it's going to harm the productivity of your work in the long term. Mm. And if you want to go the distance, then you know it's more important to consider um, your physical and mental health than it is for you know some short term wild story that you can use for your work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I would agree. And um, I was a, a management consultant in London and Ireland, in fact, for um, ten, twelve years before I came out to Thailand, where I am now, um, and. There's a real culture, even in consultancy, around working hard, working all the time, doing 60, 70 hour weeks. Um, But there's actually quite a lot of research um, out there that says if, for example, you don't take care of your needs like sleep, um, that people who get less than seven hours sleep, um, I think it's for something like more than a week, uh, a week and a half, something like that, um, it actually... uh, is such a detriment to people's performance that compared to their typical performance, it's almost like they're working drunk, um, which is kind of crazy. And the interesting thing about lack of sleep is that people don't realize that their performance is deteriorating uh, because of a lack of sleep. So one of the things that I always think is, oh, we, we don't get enough sleep, 
but we think we're still fine. And so we don't necessarily have that self-awareness to know that our performance in creativity or productivity is suffering um, because of things like lack of sleep. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, I agree. Um, so I think when I was uh, staying up too late and uh, uh, I wanted to change the way I was, mm. my sleeping patterns, what I, I, what I did was I set an alarm on my phone for going to bed. So <laughs> I think my wife thought I was going crazy. But it's it basically at nine o'clock or half nine at night, the alarm said something like um, uh, stop using your computer or wind down. Uh, and then, you know, I only had that, it was like a mental prompt, but I only had it for a few weeks and then I turned off the alarm because I found I was naturally switching off the computer at nine o'clock in the evening. And then I'd use an hour then to, to read or to do something away from screens. Um, so while it might be a bit of a heavy handed approach to have your phone to tell you what to do during the day, I actually found that, that it worked. And, and now I'm pretty reluctant to, to use the, the computer um, after a certain hour because what, what I actually find is, even though I think I'm putting more hours in, mm -hmm the quality of the work is actually a lot lower. I'm going to read something the next day that I wrote late at night. It's usually pretty terrible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I just read, uh, I don't know if you've come across it, uh, Deep Deep Work by Cal Newport, um, which is a, um, an excellent book, really, really good. And um, one of the things that he points out is exactly that, that we, we don't even realise how we're spending our time when we're so tired. Um, and he inspired me to do to take my Facebook app off my phone, which probably seems like a really small thing, um, but I realized that um, I was really mindless about the way that I was using my phone and my computer and things like that, and to be much more mindful, like you say, about using things more deliberately, because otherwise you can waste all the time that you want to put into your creative work. Yeah, yeah. So, so what, what I do is um, I have like a guilt-free list of things I want to look up on the internet. <laughs> so uh, uh, like, for example, one of my kind of hobbies is um, just, you know, looking at uh, like home cinema equipment and audio speakers and things like uh, for listening to music. But I mean, I could spend all day reading reviews about uh, uh, all that kind of stuff. But obviously it's, it's just, you know, it's, it's, it's a kind of a silly way to spend, spend my time. So what I do is if I think of something like that that I want to read, you know, I'll just have a little notepad next to where I'm working and I'll just write that down. And then when I've done something like an hour and a half of work or an hour of work, then I'll spend 10 minutes, you know, doing a guilt-free uh, reading of a review of something or perhaps going on to Facebook. Um, but I, I do find Facebook in particular is a, is a particular uh, time sink. I mean, it's, it's ingenious the way they've designed it. You go in to, I go in to check, you know, how an advertising campaign is running. And then, you know, 20 minutes later, you emerge and you wonder where did the time go? Yeah, he says um, anything with an infinite scroll, you need to be really, really careful about because you can just lose, yeah, hours. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I would say that it, like if any of your um, your readers or our viewers are struggling <clears throat> with something like this, there's a there's a great little app. Now, I'm, rel I'm reluctant to talk too much about apps, but th this app will actually block social networking websites and websites that you, that you pick for a predetermined period, and it's called Freedom. Um, so you can press a button and it disables your access to these sites for an hour or two um, to let you get some work done. So I, sometimes I use something something like that. But like anything, I find that once, you, once you've built up the habit of, of uh, not doing something, then you can remove the tools and apps and you're kind of in a, in a, in a better or more productive habit, if mm. that makes sense. Mm. And so, so what for you... Um what helps you to be most creative? So what kind of uh, physical, emotional, mental conditions have to be present for you to be truly productive and creative? Uh, yeah, yeah, well, I suppose I would say creativity and productivity are two different things. So uh, uh, creativity is all about being open, <clears throat> about being relaxed, about being somewhere where you have the time and space to work on um, an idea without being judged um, and where, where you feel free to do so and where you're, where you're comfortable making mistakes. Um, it's very much an open uh, mindset. Whereas to be productive is very much about getting things done. It's very much, you know, having a clear list of tasks that you want to accomplish. And it's very much about setting yourself, you know, deadlines to do it. Um, and that's, that's more of a, a closed um, mindset. Um, and I would say the, the triggers for, for being open <clears throat> or perhaps, you know, to listen to some music or read a book that, that you like or to, you know, go somewhere quiet. And the triggers for being productive are to, you know, get your get your work out, whatever you're working on and get your to-do list out and, and, you know, have a look at your deadline and 
and decide what your next action is for, for the, the project in question. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. And, and what about when you need to combine them? So if I think about um, uh, writing, for me, um, I tend to set myself a target with an editor. So I talk, talk to my editor, I book in the first edit, um, and then I have, I don't know, 80,000 words, 100,000 words to get done before that date. And I give myself enough time, but nonetheless, I need to make sure that I'm somewhat productive within the time, but also creative because I'm writing a book. So how, how can we combine creativity and productivity without being super stressed? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a really good question. So I read a uh, great post by the, the writer, Stephen Pressfield. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, talks a, he talks a lot about fear and how artists can overcome fear. But basically, his recent post talked about something called the, the Blitzkrieg method. So it, it, it was a kind of a metaphor for using momentum to, to reach your, your target word count or your deadline. And basically, what he, what he said is, if you, let's say you have to write 80,000 words. You know, you're going to write t- 5,000 words today or 3,000 words or whatever your daily word count is. And when you come to a piece in your work that you're stuck on, you know, you can just put a little asterisk or you can put something like TK for to come. Uh, and then you just keep writing um, and nothing should stop you. You know, you, you just you need to keep the momentum going. So anytime you reach a, a trouble, troublesome part of your work, you just annotate it and you move on until you reach your word count. Because when you need to get that far out if you're a writer and, um, you know, you shouldn't let anything stop you. Or perhaps if you're if you're a painter, when you need to get, you know, the first part of your painting completed, um, you know, you don't let anything stop you. You, you know, you do whatever it takes to, to reach your your quota for the day, uh, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I will admit that um, yesterday I was doing some writing and I probably spent half an hour looking up uh, wingback chairs on the internet because I wanted my character to have a particular style of chair in their living room. Uh, and it's probably 30 minutes that I didn't need to spend looking at yeah, that particular yeah. type of chair. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I, I write a lot of nonfiction, so I, you know, I'm a big believer in the power of research, but research can actually be a form of procrastination. Um, there comes a point where you need to stop researching and, and start writing. So, so I suppose, you know, so to speak, you could just say they sat in a chair and just use, I don't know if you use Word or something, but you could annotate the word chair and say, research chairs. And then when you're doing your second edit, you can come back and you can decide if you, if you need to get that extra bit of information. Mm-hmm. So when have you found, um, or when have you found self-care to be particularly important? What experience have you, you had uh, when maybe you weren't taking care of yourself and your creativity suffered? Uh, yeah, so that's, that's a question. I would say um, if I was writing a lot for myself, firstly, and then if sometimes I write for, for, for clients and if I was writing for them as well, then by the end of the day, I could be uh, burnt out and I'd wonder why I'm stuck in my work. Um, I suppose that, happened, that happens every now and again. And what I what I do when something like that happens is I would uh, normally go for a run or exercise, and um, typically go for a run. So I do a long distance running, and then I'd find that when I'm out for a run, an idea will come to, come to the top of my mind, and I'll find a solution, um, in my work. Um, I suppose another example is um, earlier this year I was working hard on creating a new course for, um, for online writers, and maybe towards the end of the creation of the course. I uh, kind of was a bit burnt out by the amount of work that it was. Uh, and I'd been spending a lot of my free time at the weekend recording videos and editing them. Um, and then I was kind of wondering why I was losing my motivation for doing it. And I kind of felt like giving up. But I, I had invested so much time in creating the course and, and some um, some money that I you know I knew I shouldn't quit when I'm 80% there. So what I did is I just, just decided to, to take a couple of days off and to, to go out with some friends that night and you know to, to spend some time with my wife and kids during the week. And, you know, just to, to let the week pass where I don't do anything. And then just I came back to it then the following week. And even though the course was finished a little bit later than I would have liked, I was, you know, it was better to have it finished than to not finish it and have it sitting on your computer. Mm-hmm. I think um, sometimes it's a, a, a fool's errand to think that we can do something without any breaks at all. So the breaks nourish us. They, they are the things that fill the creative well, I guess, um, in, in terms of the artist's way, to help us to be creative enough to produce the content. Um, and we think we can just push through, and, and we can't. We, we need that time to just replenish our resources. 
Uh, yeah, yeah. So the, the, the way I think of it is um, when you're creating things regularly, uh, you know, you need to replenish yourself. And one of the ways you replenish yourself is by, you know, by reading or by listening to music um, or by, you know, spending time with friends or, or, or doing something new. Uh, and then often when you're blocked, it's because you haven't replenished yourself and, you know, you're running on empty, but you don't realize it. And it's it's not that you're not working hard enough. It's just that you haven't made time to to go and read something that inspires you, or or maybe to to go to an art gallery and look at a painting that you know that that informs the type of uh, artist that you are. Mm, mm. And if I look at my fiction, particularly not so much the non-fiction work, but the fiction, um, I can see things from all different parts of my life um, inspiring different aspects of the characters. So teeny tiny details that I might have passed, um, you know, if I've just paid attention to the world around me rather than being so focused on my own um, thing, whatever I'm trying to do. Um. Yeah, yeah. Um, I suppose it's, it's helpful to be, to be mindful of uh, how you're feeling right now. And, you know, if you if you need to take a break, uh, and I suppose I don't know we talked about journaling earlier, but that's why I would find um, uh, journaling so helpful. Mm. Yeah, definitely. I um I was in Kuwait week working last week, um, and it was a really hard week, really brutal doing consultancy work. Um, and and normally I come back and I'm all excited to work on um, my writing, so I, I tend to do a week on each. Um, and uh, the weekend I was just shattered, absolutely exhausted. And in the end, I realized, remembering self-care, um, that uh, I just needed a break and not even um, an input break. Just literally, I have a hammock and I just chilled and I watched some telly, which I don't do very often. And I read and I just really um, introverted. Um, I think there's, that's actually a point. Um, I think it's good for us to realise what our preferences are as well. So for me, um, I tend to recharge on my own more effectively with a little bit of other people time. Um, how about you? Uh, yeah, it's funny you ask that. I'm, I'm reading a book at the moment by Susan Cain, oh, which I'm sure I'm, you, I'm sure book. you're familiar with. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Quiet. It's called uh, "Will You Be Quiet, Please." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's it's a uh, it's a it's a great book. Uh, it's very thought provoking. So, um, I mean, I I knew it was an introvert before I read the book, but but I suppose it was reassuring to 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 hear some stories from other introverts and and to realise that wanting that when I want to spend time alone, when I'm after spending time in the company of people, there's nothing odd or unusual about it. There's other people who do that to recharge as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it made me also realize that um, some other people that I know, like, for example, my wife and maybe one of my friends, they, they replenish by spending time in the company of other people um, and in their, in their wider social circle. And there's nothing wrong with that either. It's just it's, it's two different um, personality types. Mm. Um, and I suppose Susan makes the point in the book is, you know, you, know, you need to, I think she calls it a sweet spot. It's to, to have somewhere you go in your day mm. where you can replenish. So if you're working in a busy office, um, you know, it could be a quiet, quiet part of the office where you go to after a busy meeting to, to, to recharge or to, or to work on whatever you're working on on your project, or, or perhaps you know if, if you're working five days a week, you could do a day or two at home. Um, I suppose these are these are ways for introverts to recharge. Where, where, where is if you're an extrovert, I think some of the suggestions she makes is that you, you have plans for Friday night to, to entertain you know friends at a dinner party and that kind of thing. And helpful in a relationship too, because if you want to be a creative person and you're more introverted and your partner's more extroverted, then you both need to be able to get those needs met, which might mean uh, your partner having other friends that she can go out with so that you can introvert a bit, for example. <laughs> yeah, 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 I would agree. I mean, one of the the, the biggest challenges of if you spend a lot of time writing or, or, or doing other creative work is that that by the nature of it, you spend a lot of time working alone or you're working in, in your studio. And sometimes it can be a challenge to explain to other people what you're doing, um, particularly if you, don't, if you don't have much to show for it, because not everything you work on, you know, is going to succeed. Um, so I suppose, I suppose you need a way of explaining to, to the people close to you the, uh, what you're doing and, and why it's important to you. Um, because, you know, you have to meet people halfway. Um, and I find... Um, Susan in her book provides some examples about how to do that. Mm, mm. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, I, I also was thinking, um, what helps you 
to be creative the most of all the self-care things that you do what's the thing that really kind of makes the biggest difference to you or if it fell out of your life would be a big hole uh, uh books i would say uh so the the access to to, to books on amazon or ebooks mm. you know it, it just makes such a difference for research that if you need something you can go on to the amazon store and buy it for four dollars and it's on your kindle reader or on your computer or your or your phone and and you can you know instantly get the information that you need um and then when you're then at night then you can you can spend some time i can spend time recharging and reading books so yeah i definitely say books uh, probably closely followed by um something that's nothing to do with technology at all um or information or writing which will be you know running so i spend i run about 30 40 or 50 kilometers a week and wow. um, i find it's good to, it's good good to do something that's not uh, connected or related to, not connected to the internet or related to um uh, writing so it's something that feels uh, uh, natural so sometimes when i'm when i'm running I might think of an idea and then I'd, you know, want to get back quickly and finish whatever it is that I'm, that I'm working on. But I, I think if, if you were to say I couldn't run, I'd probably, I'd be pretty disappointed. I'd wonder how would I, what would I do to, to, to overcome, you know, stress and, mm. and so on. Yeah, I have a writer friend whose husband once said to her, you're not a brain in a vat, you're a brain in a body and you need to look after your body just as much as you need to look after your brain because she's very cerebral and uh, a bit of a thinker. Uh, So I think that's very wise advice to creative people that you need to look after your physical body as well. Um, And one other point I wanted to make for people was that um, being creative is a form of self-care in itself. So if you're doing something that you love, um, so for me, I love uh, writing and and reading, but writing particularly, um, that is a form of self-care for me. So being able to do that um, nurtures me in a way that other things don't necessarily do. I don't know what you think about that. Uh, Yeah, yeah, so I'm able to uh, write, or if I haven't been writing much, I kind of feel disconnected from from what it is that I'm supposed to be doing, um, and also people talk about creativity as if there was some sort of higher power that relates to creativity. I'm I'm not sure about that, but I but I do know that that I, you know I do need to write regularly, and that if I don't, I kind of feel a, a little bit lost. Um, and I also know that if if I haven't got into the habit of writing down ideas and and you know exploring thoughts about things on on the blank page i feel like i haven't really really thought about thought about the thing in question or haven't really experienced something Mm -hmm. so when something happens what i'm saying is when something happens to me i I, you know i need to to write about it to understand it and maybe to to kind of say if only to myself that that this happened Mm, that's really interesting yeah I, ha- I read some really interesting research which said um, that journaling uh, I think it was three to five times on a topic for about 20 minutes each time um, was one of the most effective ways of processing difficult emotional events so if people are stressing about something or they've had something you know difficult happen to them then that's a really effective way of kind of working that through yeah, I think I, re- I think I read somewhere that a journaling is cheaper than a therapist. So. <laughs> well, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Definitely. Um, fantastic. Well, um, I know we said uh, about 20 minutes, half an hour, and we're coming up to that. So um, what are the, any, any other things that you want to say about creativity and, and self-care? Uh, well, I, I suppose maybe to, for, well, maybe for productivity, I would say what's deciding what your most important thing is that you want to do each day and, you know, get up and do that first thing. And that will then let the rest of the day take care of itself. Uh, maybe for creativity, just to get in into a habit of work, you know, writing down an idea for your creative project or maybe composing a lyric um, once a day. Um, because, you know, but if you do that every day, then you'll, you'll build a habit of being creative. Uh, and then maybe for self-care, it's, it's to, to consider the, the entirety of your life um, and not just your, you know, your work or not just the time that you spend um, with friends. You know, you need to, you need to have all the pieces of the, of the jigsaw um, fitting together. And it's, it's a real challenge to do that, obviously, but um, maybe to ask yourself, what should you, should you do more of and what you should do less of? Maybe to ask that once a week. Mm, that's a, yeah, that's a great, um, great question. Great self-inquiry. I think balance is the thing that we all strive for. 
Um, and it's almost impossible to get everything perfectly balanced, but what I do think is that you can have them balanced for that week. So it might be that work is a bigger priority one week and family is a bigger priority another week or uh, time alone is more important one week and time with friends another week. And as long as across the piece, um, considering all those pieces, as you say, you've, you've kind of got enough attention given to each one for you which I think is very different for all of us as we were talking about earlier with introverts and extroverts um, then I think you can kind of achieve that that self-care um, the, the other thing I would say is that self-care is a, a habit so that consistency piece applies to looking after yourself being kind to yourself just as much as it does about um, being productive and being creative because um, it's not something you can just do once and tick off the list. It's something you have to keep an eye on uh, all the time. Um, but I, I think, and the research shows, that the more that you are kind to yourself, um, both physically and also in your head, the, the talk track you have in your head, uh, the more likely you are to be able to be the best version of you and creative and productive. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I would agree. I think, I think a lot of what you're saying there touches on maybe some of the practices or the, the, the thought processes that, that meditation teaches. Um, it's a great way of, of gaining those kind of insights. Mm, mm, fantastic. Um, well, I would say that there is plenty on Brian's website. If you're uh, listening to this or watching this on Brian's website, you'll know that. And there's also lots on my website as well, uh, which is Um And if you want uh, tips on self-care, tips on creativity, productivity, writing, I think between us we cover all those topics and more. Um, so, Brian, just say your website one more time again. Yeah, so my website is www.becomearitertoday.com and if you visit becomearitertoday.com forward slash join um, I'll give you some, some practical uh, writing tips that will help you whether you're a new fiction or non-fiction writer. Fantastic and there's some stuff around journaling as well on your website isn't there in, in various places it's covered. Yeah yeah if you visit the site and uh, I'll or send me an email Brian at Become a Writer Today I'll, I'll send you some of the, the, the articles are written about journaling lovely um, and on my website if you're listening to this on Brian's website um, I have um, uh, 101 tips for to be creative uh, have fun and play which is very much about the balance between creativity and self-care um, and uh, I will do a link alambard.com slash join also because I think my link is longer and uh, direct people to that uh, fantastic. So thank you so much, Brian, for uh, joining me for this international Great, yeah, conversation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was lovely to talk to you, Adam. Thank you. Thanks a lot.